down and dirty. Tips and tricks for keeping your plane out of the shop. Starring Steve Dirty Hands. Today, how to protect your cockpit front wall from the abuses that it gets when you're changing batteries or handling your plane or maybe carrying it around down at the field. Howdy, the hands are back. Today, we have a gorgeous little plane, 980 millimeter FMS P47, the high speed version and we're gonna do the P40 as well. This little baby, gorgeous plane, gorgeous to fly. We have it reinforced with our Supermax kit. Love to take this out and sling it around. The more you use it though, the more beat up it gets, especially right here at the front of the cockpit where you're always dealing with the plane, putting the battery in, taking it out, picking the plane up like I do, various things like that. This may be a sharp corner, but I don't handle it all that much. We have our handles that we have on here, which keeps me from even grabbing it to take it off. So what we're left with is this, and it's really easy to shore this up and keep it from getting beat up the way that this one already is. As part of that general getting beat up picture, our canopy is holding our battery down because I'm flying with a huge oversized battery. We use this 3300 four cell. Yeah, baby. Get some serious time out of this. And on top of everything else, you know, if you do pick your plane up like this, you're picking it up right on a seam. So we have a fix for this. What we do, is of course glue on some HDPE plastic. We take a piece like this, which is slightly thicker, and we glue it to the top of the inside here. And we're going to remove this tab and glue it into this hole here and fill it up, and then put on a thinner piece of HDPE right at the front of the cockpit that comes up to this surface right here. We end up with a nice sharp corner, it's, and it's protected very nice. So it works quite well. We have this stuff on sale, by the way, Killer Planes, sheets of different color, HDPE now, that's the thickness of milk bottle plastic. It's 1 64th of an inch thick. Ooh. We make this front piece by taking a blank, and the first thing we need to do is cut it down into the hole. So we mark each side. You can either mark it like this or measure it. And we need to find out how far down it can go before it hits here. So we can cut those sides that far up. So I want to subtract a little bit of that to make sure that I definitely do go all the way up. There's that side. And there's that side. Now I can extend my sides. This is fine, it's, it's off center, but it's okay because I'm going to be cutting away both sides by the time we get done with this, so it's preferable to never cut into a corner. It's better to cut around them like this, and since you're putting it against foam, it'll push into that square foam corner just fine. You don't have to worry about making a nice square corner in your HDPE, and that's good because a nice square corner is not preferable. Now it fits in here, and it's higher than this, so I can scribe the curve onto the other side of this right here. I need to make sure that this is pressed flat against here when I do scribe that curve so that I'm not drawing all over the place. And you want to put your pencil so that it's angled flat like this. You don't want to lay your pencil down. You want to angle it flat against the piece that you're scribing. So your pencil mark is right in there. And there it is, a beautiful pencil mark on my plastic. So we just cut right down the middle of that pencil line. Because even doing that, I'm going to mess up and cut on the inside. First thing we want to do is put a tooth on our plastic so that the glue sticks. So I have my piece and it's sanded now. And we just have to figure out where the middle part, where the battery is. And I can remove any overhang beneath the foam because it's just invitation to get yanked off. I'm going to cut the bottom off where it overhangs. First the bottom, then the top. And now I can probably see my hole better. Now I can mark my hole thusly. And cut, cut ye plastic. But do not remove ye too much, because ye will be upset. 
make sure you stay parallel with the bottom when you're cutting across and cut ye back down. Now let's see how it works. Oh, that is looking just fine. I might have to trim it a little on the sides because we don't want to be dragging the battery along it either. There it is. It's a beautiful thing. Now, let's fill in our little space here so that we have something to glue it against. We hang on to wingtip foam so that we can use it for stuff like this. It's good EPO. How wide is that? It's this wide. Cut it a little wide, you can always make it smaller. And if it's a little big, a little big, pretty ugly, you can stuff it in there. Why? Because it's firm. All right, so it's going to have to be this deep in order to be the depth I want. And we're going to have to cut a little curve on the top. All right, right across, thusly. We have a little curve. So we will remove some material. That, I'm Monty again. Men, today we have an objective. I'm not Monty anymore. That's bad Monty. Okay, I'm, I'm liking this. So now we have to get it up so that it is not sticking down into the battery compartment, but flush with the bottom. And that would be right around here, as my finger tells me, from rubbing it on the inside. Nice cut, Steve. Let's try it. Ah, it's close enough for jazz. Little hot glue, a little piece. First the hot glue. There we go. Some on there. Some on here. Now, let's get it into the plane. And now, we want to move it down and then push it up to be flush with the bottom of the other piece, like that. And there it is. Now just let it sit. I don't need this in there, do I? And now our top piece is ready, and we put some glue on here. Same thing, hot glue set on hot. And we get it in there before it can burn me. I've made an arrow on here so that I can tell if I'm pushing it further in when I'm rubbing it. Then reach in there and rub it down with a stick so that it is firmly attached to the film. All right. I think that feels firmly attached. Did I forget to mention, we're going to be holding this on now with pins, carbon fiber pins that go into the HDPE plastic on this side, which means a solid hold in something that's not squishable like foam. So what we're going to do is put this side first, put our plastic on, and mount pins in here that are going to stick out about three-eighths of an inch or so, maybe a quarter. They don't need to stick out far, just far enough to go through this HDPE plastic on the other side. So now with an emery board, I'm sanding down this piece of foam that I mounted in there so that everything is flush. Now that looks sharp. All right, the best way to locate our rods is to drill them through both pieces of plastic at the same time, since these are going to line up together. So first we'll glue this one on here so we know where it is. And then we'll tape this one on and drill our holes through. Once again, regular old contact cement. This happens to be gel type contact cement. I think our brush is rock type. And there's that. Now let's do this. There we are. Alrighty. And we glue this piece. We're ready to put it on. I have some pieces of carbon fiber taped together so that I can make a little cradle so I can't stick this out too far when I'm putting it on. Pretty much like that. And now it's on. So I want to make sure that my plastic is lined up and even on the top and straight and not rolled to one side or the other. So, when I put this on, in theory, this is going to line up like that against that piece of plastic, which will be glued onto the plane. So now we want to drill holes right into these two pieces of foam. All right, so we go. Yeah, I had you going there, didn't I? One here. And one here. 
Here is a good way to get your piece onto the plane now. Keep that piece on there with the pinholes lined up. And in theory, we should be able to get this in place and push it up against our front wall. As long as we have our canopy down where we want it. Now, those should be placed relative to each other flush here. It's a beautiful thing. And we just squish it on. Going to press it into the corners like a so. All right. I have my bottom piece on here, and that'll hold me when I'm picking up the plane. This will keep me from beating up the top edge. Now I can touch this up and touch that up, and this will be one nice looking piece. Let's get our rods in there with pins. So I have my pins made, they're like two inches long, and I drill the hole in there, I squeeze in a dollop of hot glue, scrape off the excess, and push in my pin. That is a beautiful thing. So now I just want it to stick out about a quarter of an inch or so, like that. And we'll let those cool down before we push them into the other one. Since my plane is already beat up, it's not new anymore. I'm going to fill in these little beat up parts next to the plastic with some spackle. And then we'll let that dry and do a touch up. So here it is, the point of doing all that. A really nice clean joint that stays that way through usage. We have pins instead of a foam hatch holder, plastic and plastic here. And with those little changes, this plane will stay beautiful through lots of use. So go have a good time with it and we'll see you on the flat line. Woohoo! <laughs>